The 1980s was a truly iconic decade for action figures. From He-Man and the Masters of the Universe to G.I. Joe, Transformers and Thundercats, the dominant toy lines of the era all had accompanying cartoons and represented a who's who of 1980s pop culture. With action figure properties being so wildly popular at the time, you'd think that a toy line based on the most popular live action television show of the era would be a surefire hit. But it was not to be. The A-Team was an American action-adventure television series that ran from 1983 to 1987 and was based on the weekly exploits of a group of Special Forces soldiers turned soldiers of fortune. The show starred Hollywood leading man George Papard and also turned a then-unknown Mr. T into a household name. The A-Team, with its cartoonish over-the-top violence, in which anyone was seldom hurt, became one of the biggest TV hits of the decade and was popular with both adults and children alike. Cashing in on this popularity, American toy company Galoo produced a range of three and three quarter inch A-Team action figures, the same scale as the popular Star Wars toys of the time. They then released a range of six inch A-Team action figures, then a 12 inch Mr. T action figure, and to further muddy the waters, toy company Ertl released one to 16 scale die cast A-Team vehicles. This scattershot approach to the various action figure scales led to the A-Team becoming the world's most confused action figure toy line. Tony and welcome to an Analog Toys special feature, Toy Histories with Galoob's A-Team. Lewis and Barbara Galoob founded the Galoob Toy Company in San Francisco, California in 1957. Their first notable success was the reintroduction of a battery-powered Jolly Chimp that banged cymbals and nodded his head when activated. The company did decent business throughout the 1970s, but it was in the early 1980s that they first saw a television property they could really exploit. A hit new television show from writers and producers Stephen J. Cannell and Frank Lupo was tearing its way through the weekly ratings. The story of the A-Team is now the thing of 1980s pop culture legend. Ten years ago, a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from maximum security stockade to the Los Angeles underground. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem that no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team. Yeah, you know the rest. Leader of the A-Team and master of disguise was John Hannibal Smith. The team's second in command was Templeton face man Peck. The team's pilot was Howling Mad Murdoch, who played the role of comic relief. And finally, there was the team's most popular character, the strongman and mechanic, Bosco V. Abarakis, played by 80s pop culture icon, Mr. T. The A-Team had left an indelible imprint on the cultural landscape of the 1980s, and it wasn't long before the Galoob range of action figures started appearing in toy stores. The A-Team action figures prove that just because you've got a hit television show, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should make a toy line. The first series of A-Team action figures were produced in the three and three quarter inch scale and were launched in 1983. This scale had been made famous by the Star Wars range of figures, but more importantly, this scale brought about a reinvented G.I. Joe action figure, which Galoob seemed hell bent on imitating. For starters, the Galoob range of three and three quarter inch A-Team action figures were not dressed in their signature TV costumes. They were dressed more like G.I. Joe figures with ammo pouches and grenades rigged up to their fatigue uniforms. In addition, Galoob all but copied the articulation design of the more popular G.I. Joe figures, with bendable elbows and knees and an O-ring used to hold the various parts of the body together. And as if further proof were required, let's take a look at the four generic bad guys that Galoob produced. With names like Cobra, Python, Rattler and Viper, how could Galoob honestly say they weren't trying their damnedest to rip off the G.I. Joe franchise. But copying G.I. Joe wasn't to be the downfall of the three and three quarter inch AT action figure range. Its biggest mistake was the use of cheap plastics and some utterly terrible head sculpts. The individual characters barely resemble their TV counterparts and are downright ugly. The use of cheap plastics also means that these figures are extremely susceptible to broken thumbs and hands. And once an AT action figure can no longer hold his rifle, he's pretty much useless. Where Galoob's three and three quarter inch range did excel is in the A-Team's vehicles. 
Each character got his own vehicle, including Face's Corvette, Murdoch's jet bomber, and Hannibal's patrol boat. But the team's mechanic, B.A. Baracus, had two vehicles, the armoured attack tank, and of course, the A-team's tactical van. In the tradition of the Dukes of Hazzard's General Lee and Knight Rider's kit, the A-team's GMC van was the unofficial star of the show, and Galoob made a very decent effort of recreating it in tour form. A removable roof gave a child access to the inside of the van, where every member of the team had his own seat. The 3 and 3 quarter inch A-team action figure range was extensive and varied, but this didn't translate into huge sales, which is why it is still very easy to pick up carded examples of these figures in today's collector's market. Seeing their toy line rapidly dying off, Galoob decided to give the franchise a toy reboot, and came out with a range of 6 inch A-team action figures in 1984. Not learning from their past mistakes, this new incarnation of the A-Team characters was played with the same issues as before, with the use of cheap plastics and below average sculpting. The 6 inch range did include a couple of vehicles and is also notable for the inclusion of the now very rare A-Team Command Center. But something that was criminally overlooked was the A-Team's tactical van, which was never produced for the 6 inch range. How could Galoob exclude the A-Team's van? That's like having a He-Man toy without Battle Cat, or having the Boba Fett action figure without his Slave One. The A-Team's tactical van was the unofficial fifth member of the team, but instead of giving us the van, Galoob gave us Amy Allen. In the show, the beautiful actress Melinda Kalia played the part of Amy Allen, but Galoob's incarnation of this character is quite possibly the ugliest action figure ever made. The poor quality of Galoob's A-Team toys didn't fool kids, and once again they were left languishing on toy store shelves. It seemed that everything Galoob tried was failing in toy stores, but they must be commended for not giving up, as they decided to have a third attempt at producing A-Team action figures. Realising that the breakout star of the show was Mr T, Galoob dropped the other A-Team action figure lines and focused solely on releasing a 12-inch Mr T action figure. These Mr T figures seemed to be the most popular with children, perhaps because for the first time in Galoob's A-Team history, they actually decided to put a bit of effort into the sculpting of the character's likeness. Aside from the vehicles, most of the various A-Team action figures can still be found quite easily in their original packaging in today's collector's market, and this is testament to how poorly they sold back in the 1980s. While the A-Team television show towered above its peers and is quite rightly remembered as one of the most iconic of the entire decade, Galoob's range of action figures struggled to compete with the likes of He-Man and G.I. Joe, and is now remembered as the ginger stepchild of most 80s childhoods.